Hey everybody, it's Mr. Joe here at Altamont Free Library. Um, today is March 2nd, and it's a really important day um, because today is Read Across America Day. So I hope that everybody's reading today. Um, and, uh, but it's also a very important day because it's the birthday of a good friend of ours. It's a birthday of Dr. Seuss. Now I know everybody has their own favorite Dr. Seuss story to read, but my favorite to read is The Sneetches. Has anybody ever read The Sneetches before? Hmm. It's a really good one, and I thought that for Read Across America Day and for uh, Dr. Seuss's birthday, that maybe I could read it for you. What do you think? Let's do it. The Sneetches by Dr. Seuss. Now, the star belly Sneetches had bellies with stars, and the plain belly Sneetches had none upon the ours. Those stars weren't so big. They were really so small, you might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly Sneetches would brag, we're the best kind of Sneetch on the beaches. And with snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort, we'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they saw some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars in the star belly sneeches, and the plain belly sneeches had none upon bars. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurt or roasts or picnics or parties or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. But then, one day it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean. And I've heard of your troubles, I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that, I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you, I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then old Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have one for three dollars each. Just pay me your money, and hop right on board. So they clambered inside, and that big machine roared, and it clonked, and it bunked, and it jerked, and it burked, and it bopped them around, but the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches came out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon theirs. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can come to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best sneeches, and they are the worst. But how in the world will we know they all frowned if which kind is what, or the other way round? Then up came McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, Things are not quite as bad as you think, so you don't know who's who. That's perfectly true, but come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneeches on beaches, and all it will cost you is $10 each. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your star so you won't look like sneeches who have them upon theirs. And that handy machine, working very precisely, removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then with snoots in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their beaks, and they let out a shout. Now we know who is who, now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars got all frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. But, of course, then old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into the star off machine, and from then on, as you can probably guess, things really got into a horrible mess. All the rest of that day on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. In again, out again, off again, on again, through the machine they raced round and about again. Chasing, changing their stars every minute or two, they kept, they kept paying money and kept running through until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one or that one was this one or which one was what one or what one was who. 
Then when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They never will learn. Nope, you can't teach a snitch. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the Sneetches got really quite smart on that day. That day, they decided that Sneetches are Sneetches, and no kind of Sneetch is the best on the beaches. That day, they decide, that they, that day, the Sneetches forgot about stars, and whether they had one or not, upon thars. The end. That's a really fun story to read. A lot of Dr. Seuss's stories are, are filled with, with funny words and funny sounds, and um, they're a lot of fun to read, but they also give you something to think about a little bit. Here's one more quick story. It doesn't give you very much to think about, but it does have more funny words in it than uh, I think any of his other stories. This one is called Too Many Daves. Did I ever tell you that Mrs. McCabe had 23 sons? And she named them all Dave? Well, she did. But that wasn't a smart thing to do. You see, when she wants one and calls out, Yoo-hoo, come into the house, Dave! She doesn't get one. All 23 Daves of hers come on the run. And this makes things quite difficult at the McCaves. As you can imagine, with so many Daves, and often she wishes that when they were born, she had named one of them Bodkin Van Horn and one of them Who's Foos, and one of them Snim, and one of them Hotshot, and one Sunny Jim, and one of them Shadrack, and one of them Blinky, and one of them Stuffy, and one of them Stinky, and another one Putt-Putt, and another one Moonface, and another one Marvin O'Gravel Balloonface, and another one Ziggy, and one Soggy Muff, and one Buffalo Bill, and one Biffalo Buff, and one of them Sneepy, and one Weepy Weed, and one Paris Garters, and one Harris Tweed, and one of them Sir Michael Carmichael Zutt, and one of them Oliver Bolliver Butt, and one of them Zanzibar Buck Buck McFate. But she didn't do that. And now it's too late. I hope you guys all have a great Read Across America Day, and uh, a great Dr. Seuss's birthday. We'll see you guys again real soon. Take care.